Hey guys, what is up? And I welcome each and every one of you to a new video. So it has been a few days since Alawi's release onto the live servers. And I'm sure at least some of you have tried out this champion or at least have faced her. But either way, throughout this video, we'll be talking about everything there is to mention about this champion from tips and tricks to runes, masteries, items, the positives and negatives of this champion, and the final is she OP rating at the end of the video. So if you end up enjoying this video, definitely hit that like button to support me. But let's finally get right into things without wasting any more time. So let's first talk about some tips and tricks when playing this champion. The first one is you can easily use your E ability on a target either backing or teleporting away maybe to assist the bot lane or the mid lane or somewhere in the jungle and then as they leave the E ability will proc on them and make them a vessel since they do leave the range. Also I'm assuming that you will be playing Alawi in the top end since that is by far the best role for her next to maybe jungle or mid. The next tip I want to tell you guys is actually very very important to know and understand. Whenever you use your E ability on a champion and pull out their soul, if you use your ultimate and you get both the soul and the enemy champion within that ultimate, that will spawn two tentacles from your ultimate, which will of course help you win a 1v1 fight that much easier. And contrary to what some websites may say, if you use your W or your E ability, whether it's pulling out the soul or making them a vessel, it will actually queue up a tentacle attack even if one is already attacking. So for example, if a tentacle on the wall is attacking a target and it's halfway through the attack animation and you use your W on that same target, well that tentacle will attack the target once again the second it's auto attack that it's in the process of finishes, so don't worry about it completely cancelling it out. So whenever fighting with a loud one of the most important things like I mentioned at the beginning is of course to try and get your ultimate while having the spirit taking out of that champion to get two tentacles. But should you prioritize the spirit or the champion when it comes to using your abilities and overall just using your main damage sources? Well best case scenario is to try and hit both of them with everything you can so maybe hit both of them with your Q, hit both of them with a tentacle slam or something like that. But if you have to choose it's always the champion over the spirit because if the champion does get away from your range you can always use the spirit to add a bit more damage or if you're chasing the champion the second they leave the range of the spirit well they're gonna get slowed and that'll help you catch up and the final thing is there's three ways for your tentacle to hit the champion that you wanted to hit the first of which is commanding it with your W the second is creating a spirit using the first part of your E and the final way is tentacles will attack any vesseled champions which is the second part of your E but what's interesting is the fact that existing tentacles will try to hit a vessel champion every 10 or so seconds so on top of the new tentacles spawning to try and hit that champion, any ones that have already been placed and the champion walks near them will also keep trying to hit them. Another important thing, especially in the laning phase, is whenever you're trying to land your E on an enemy opponent, try to make sure that when you pull out the soul, the soul is beside a tentacle you have spawned on a wall, so that you get the bonus damage to try and kill the soul and just overall do more damage. Because don't forget, pulling out the soul will cause any nearby tentacles to instantly attack the soul. Similar to Kindred, if you use your ultimate after just finishing using your W, and let's say it's on a 7 second cooldown for the W, well, the ultimate will instantly take that W cooldown and make it 2 seconds. Your E is also great for poking and initiating when both teams are dancing trying to wait for the first person to make a mistake. And the final major tip and trick that I want to mention are the typical combos to use your abilities in the proper sequence. So in a typical fight when you're dueling someone maybe top lane or just somewhere around the map, what you usually want to do is try to kite around with your Q ability while you're moving towards the tentacle you already have placed. If you get into range then initiate it with the E ability and then the ultimate so that you have at least 2 tentacles attacking that target. Your tentacles should swing at that target because you took out their spirit. Then you want to auto attack W for the reset which will make your tentacles attack once again and finish it off with a Q. The second one is the assassination type combo. So if you're waiting in a bush and someone walks in without knowing you're there, this is kind of how you want to do it. You can start things off with a Q if you're feeling greedy or confident but usually you want to start with the E to give them as less time to react as possible. So you pull out their soul, use the ultimate to get double tentacles, use the auto attack W to get the tentacles to attack once again for the target, and then finish it off with your Q. So after playing several games, those are the major tips and tricks that I can think of that I think should definitely help your play. So what are the positives of Ilawi? What exactly are her strengths? Well, there's quite a bit. First and foremost, this champion is very, very strong. You do not want to underestimate her because she will simply destroy you. But being a little more specific, Mana isn't surprisingly an issue, even though I thought it would be. I tend to always have 
have about a half mana pool as long as I'm not spamming my abilities mindlessly. Her Q is absolutely ridiculously strong, able to clear waves without any problems whatsoever that I think is absolutely ridiculous for a bruiser type champion. The tentacles spawning around the laning phase are absolutely ridiculously annoying to deal with and you have to play almost a mini game whenever you're facing an Alawi in lane. Because if you get hit by them for no reason, well you're taking quite a bit of damage. She's got several ways in her kit to force tentacles to attack what and who she wants to attack. Her E is the definition of absolutely annoying, obnoxious stuff within the lane as well. She has quite good scaling on those tentacles. She has a game changing ultimate to the point where if she gets a good one, she can absolutely wipe a team fight in a few seconds. And she can even win unfavorable matchups as well when it comes to maybe her versus three, four champions, all thanks to her ultimate. Definitely not a champion you want to underestimate. However, the cons of Alawi are the fact that while the tentacles are definitely immobile, they do not move from where they spawn. And this is somewhat of an issue because they do spawn randomly, you do not choose exactly where you want them to spawn. Though it is possible to have a bit of influence to tell them where you want them to spawn roughly. Against a good opponent that can dodge these without problems, well these tentacles on the wall tend to be just free CS and gold. She doesn't have any good escapes or gap closures and her ultimate can be easily avoided and stopped because she has a decent channel time from when she jumps jumps into the air to when she slams the ground. Not the biggest of cons, but they are still definitely there. But I'm sure some of you are asking which abilities you should be maxing. Well I think it goes without saying that you always want to max your Q and there's really no reason not to because it is by far your best ability when it comes to the laning phase. But whether you max your W or E second is the question. At first I thought W max second would be the best option, however I tried maxing E second instead and I have to say I am very pleasantly surprised. So in most cases I will actually recommend to max your E second because it is your main form of bullying in the lane if you land the E ability, you have a lot of potential with that, it's massive when it comes to dueling or even just fighting a lot of people. It really is your only range type harass ability and trust me when I say rank 4 or 5 of your E ability is absolutely huge when it comes to how much damage the champion will take from the damage you deal to the spirit. Here's something else I'm sure a lot of people are absolutely dying to know, what runes and masteries do I run? Well I actually use a very simple and straightforward rune page, flat armor, MR per level blues, and flat AD quints and reds. It's all about being as dominant in the laning phase as possible because that easily is her strong point. And for masteries I really enjoy the 12-0-18 because grasp of the undying with how you build her being a tanky HP stacking damage dealing champion is absolutely gorgeous. There's one alteration to the mastery page that I'll talk about very soon. But let's quickly talk about what kind of items you should be building on this Kraken Priestess. If you're facing a melee opponent that you can absolutely abuse, then you want to go for the Doran's Blade. If you're facing a ranged opponent like Lulu or Kennen that can be a little annoying to get onto, then you want to go for the Doran Shield. But regardless, these core items I have listed in the first build out of the three I'll mention are without question probably the best and most well-rounded items for this champion. And in most cases, unless you're trying something new, these should be the items you go and prioritize. You're essentially getting two very solid items on her, Black Cleaver and Titanic Hydra, and then building a bunch of other defensive items that give also a lot of HP. Now if you're facing an AD top laner, then for the fourth item you definitely want the Dead Men's Plate. If you're facing an AP top laner, then probably the Maul Malmortius. But whichever one you do not get out of those two isn't necessarily considered a core item anymore, it just really depends on the rest of the team. However, you guys know me and my playstyle, I love playing high damage assassin type champions, so I made a second build that kind of utilizes that. This one is a very assassin type build where you have a lot of damage and really just play like an assassin. You get the Yomus, Triforce, and then Titanic Hydra, Sterex for the defensive items as well, and then maybe something like a Black Cleaver or whatever you want. This is a very strong dueling type build that that has a lot of damage built in it, though I still think the first build is overall better. And for this item build is where I have a different mastery page. I won't go too in depth into this page but it is 18012 and I go for the fervor so that I get extra damage on my auto attacks thanks to the Triforce and the Yomu's attack speed. And the final item build is very similar to the second one, you just simply skip the Yomu's and you go for Triforce and then the Sterex gauge instead. And now the final moment of this video, let's put her on my new scale of OP. Is she OP? Is she not OP? That is the question that the video is asking and the answer is most definitely yes. She 
she is overpowered. In my opinion, of the recent champions that have been released, she's got to be the strongest one of them all, if not top three, easily. She's got one of the strongest laning phases I've seen in quite some time, and really she just is an absolute powerhouse. Her pros heavily outweigh her cons, and I feel like she is going to be very infamous very soon, if not already, for just how ridiculously strong and annoying she can be. But that is about it for this video, guys. Those are my Elawi tips and tricks, and really everything you need to know to play this champion and understand her. If you did enjoy this video, found it informative or whatever, definitely hit that like button to support me, subscribe if you haven't, check out my other videos as well, and I'll definitely catch you for the next one. Peace.